My name is Brian Young, professor of weed science at Purdue University. Herbicide resistant weeds have really become a major problem just in the last 15 years or so. They've been around for decades. But the reason why they're so more problematic today is because we have multiple herbicide resistance. And so as we've run out of options to go to, it's created greater problems. And really, it's been a financial cost to some of the growers as well. My name is Eric Prosco. I'm a professor and extension weed specialist at the University of Georgia in the Department of Crop and Soil Sciences. My definition of integrated weed management would be using all the tools available to us to manage weeds in a particular crop, including things like cover crops, tillage, herbicides, hand weeding, and crop rotation. If you think about the resistance problem, we started relying more on herbicides and less on other tactics like tillage or row spacing or whatever. We got into a trouble. We're never going to beat Mother Nature in the end, but we can delay her fury by throwing as many things at her as possible to try to keep things going. Understanding what weeds you have in the field is understanding your target. I sometimes uh, liken it to hunting, of course. You know, you have to know what the target is, uh, what it looks like, where you'll find it, its behavior. We have to know that about our weed species. So scouting fields, when they're a problem, identifying the problem early on. In general, I'd say all farmers are going to have a pretty good idea on what's in their fields, whether they have resistance or not in those particular species and what kind of resistance they have. It's critical to make sure that we start clean and stay clean. It's important to address weed management at the proper time. Once you have the beans up or the corn is up, you have limited options to try and manage some of those weeds at that point. Uh, and we need all the options we have to control some of our problematic weeds today. You have to start clean. If you don't start clean, you're probably going to lose, right? Because at that point, you're probably going to have weeds that are much too large to control. You're going to spend a lot of money trying to control a large weed, and you're never going to win. So how do you start clean? Well, you do a couple of things. You can use tillage, you can use cover crops, you can use herbicides, or you can use a combination of all three. You have to do everything possible to start clean. It's very clear now that it's, it's going to be almost impossible for growers to manage resistance and typical weed problems without the use of residual herbicides. And when they get activated with moisture, whether that's rainfall or, or irrigation, they work great. Well, what we'd like to do with crop rotation in an integrated weed management strategy is have a series of crops which allows us flexibility uh, to rotate different control practices. Uh, applying glyphosate in your corn and applying glyphosate in your soybean, that is rotating crops, but you know, that's a challenge that I think we do have here in the U.S. is we need to integrate more crops into our rotation so that we can be more diversified in how we manage weeds. So herbicide mode of action and site of action are two different things. Mode of action is the overall process in which a herbicide works to ultimately kill the plant. So it's the point of uptake into the weed to the point of plant death. The site of action is where the herbicide has an effect in the plant. So it's the specific location, typically an enzyme, that the herbicide will have an activity at. A lot of the herbicide resistant weeds that we have today are specific in terms of having resistance to that herbicide site of action. So in corn and soybean weed management, there's roughly around 11 different common herbicide sites of action that we have access to so that we try to delay the onset of resistance or help manage some currently resistant weed species in our fields. It's important that growers know that their sites of action or modes of action so they can begin to understand that if they overuse those they're going to develop resistance. So if they understand what they are then they can make a better decision uh, in using something else. Both pre and post herbicides need to be timed appropriately. You have to time it so that it's obviously prior to your main emergence period for that weed species. Post-emergence herbicides probably a little bit more familiar for some growers or applicators. You know, small weeds, better activity. That's probably the single most important factor that we have been doing a poor job of ever since the mid-90s. Ever since Roundup allowed us to kill big weeds, we've been trying to do so. Uh, whereas we should focus on these small weed species. The herbicide use rate, you know, recommended on the label, that's first and foremost where you have to refer to to know what rate of herbicide you need to apply. But if you think about it, applying a high rate on a very large weed is almost like applying a low dose, 
you know, in some ways on a very small weed. And so we want to make sure we have the right dose out there to kill the weed at all times. We don't want marginal weed control. So in any given field, you're going to have varying degrees of height in a plant. So that's why we suggest don't wait for the average. Get in there when the biggest pigweed is no bigger than three inches and you're going to have a much better chance of success. If we catch the weeds early, then we have a chance that there might be another useful herbicide that we can integrate it in the program, or there could be something that we, if we know that we have a challenged herbicide, you know, overlap another residual herbicide on top of that to prevent even further escapes from occurring. If you have weeds survive your herbicide application and you do believe that they are herbicide resistant, pull them. I've heard about this weed being resistant to my herbicide and it survived, maybe go hand weed those for an afternoon or find somebody else who's willing to do that. So the idea of zero tolerance is where we don't want any weeds that survived our herbicide applications to produce seed because the idea is that seed could be herbicide resistant. We don't want that perpetuate in the soil seed bank. Just one plant in an acre could lead to 200,000 plants the next year. When I was a younger weed scientist, one of the things that was talked about a lot was um, is that we didn't have to have 100% control of all the weeds. And we've completely flipped that now because of resistance, because we don't want any seed going back into the soil because that's just causing problems for future generations. Growers realize that if they leave just a few plants in the field, they may have ruined two years worth of great weed control work by allowing just a few plants to escape and produce seed. In terms of weed management, uh, having good equipment hygiene, you might call it. So we need to make sure that we're not introducing resistant weed seeds to our other field operations. And so that does mean cleaning your harvest equipment, uh, cleaning your tillage equipment before you go to the next site. If you have a really weedy field, and you know there probably is some herbicide resistance, maybe make that hopefully your last field that you harvest for the year so that you don't take that weed seed and contaminate other fields. Once you get some of these resistant weeds, you know, the cost of weed control goes up and, you know, we like to avoid it, but maybe even yields go down because you do have weed pressure at harvest. But there is an economic cost in terms of yield and herbicides and then the labor involved. Uh, it just takes more time and effort to manage a herbicide resistant weed field than not. Having a long term herbicide plan I think is a good thing because then you can start saying, all right, I've overused that mode of action, I need to use something else. And I don't think we've done that enough and talked about two or three or four or five years. And that's maybe something that we can, growers could consider as they're trying to get a handle on it. Bayer has a lineup of herbicides to deliver clean field results. Learn more at cropscience.bear.us slash herbicides.